Let's talk about breakdown keyframes. Back when I was using Maya back in the earlier days, they only had keyframes, just plain old keyframes. And then somewhere along the way, I have no idea when they added this, they added this thing called a breakdown key. So this also has roots in animation history. So again, the animators would begin by drawing their key poses or key drawings for a shot. Once those were all nailed down, then you figure out, okay, how does a character move between pose A and pose B, or whatever it happens to be? And they would add a series, usually a few, not just one, but a series of other drawings in between the key drawings there, and they would call those drawings breakdowns, because they would literally be breaking down the motion to figure out, okay, what exactly happens between, you know, here and here? Does it kind of drag the wrist behind? Does the wrist kind of lead things and flow like that? How is the motion progressing from A to B? And those uh, help them to figure out what that motion is. And then everything else, all the rest of the drawings get filled in by the in-betweeners on the crew. But the breakdowns help to pretty much go between your key poses. And that's primarily what the breakdown key in Maya is meant to do in theory anyway. Um, <clears throat> kind of using the idea of a key pose, not necessarily a key frame, but more like key poses. You build a series of maybe two or three key poses in Maya to represent those key moments in your shot. And then you'd use the breakdown key frames to start breaking down the motion between those key poses, similar kind of the, to the breakdown to the, uh, the traditional side of things. But they behave a little bit differently as far as their actual operation and what Maya does with them in Maya. So there is no, by default, no hotkey for setting a breakdown key on something. So if I were to go back out here, let's say on frame 19, I wanted to do that. I would have to go back to my animation menu set here in the key menu and set a breakdown key like this. So it pops that in there. And you notice in both the time slider and the graph editor, it's colored differently. So it has this green highlight in both places here telling me that's a breakdown key. That's not one of my normal keyframes. So what does a breakdown key do? What it does is it tries to remember its relative position in time between the two surrounding keyframes on either side of it, whether they're breakdowns or just regular keyframes. So if I were to move either keyframe here, either one or 25, it's about you know two thirds, maybe three quarters, roughly, closer to the 25 frame keyframe than the one back on frame one, and it would try and keep that relative position. So if I grab frame 25 and I drag this earlier, that keyframe on 19 again tries to stay, relatively speaking, about the same you know distance time-wise between one and my new position of that new keyframe. And the same thing happens if I grab frame one down here, it'll kind of stay closer to frame 25 about that same relative amount. And let's say the director comes along and says, I like your key poses, but your timing is a little bit too spread out, kind of just squish everything together. Rather than having to grab all the individual poses, breakdowns included, all you do is grab, okay, either one or 25 on one end and you squish it down and everything in the middle, if they're all breakdown keyframes anyway, they all get kind of compacted together or spread out as said to make it longer. So in theory, it's supposed to be helping you. But again, when I do this, I get things on non-whole frame numbers. And so I've still got to snap those back to whole frame amounts to figure out, does that frame amount actually work with the new timing? Because just because the whole thing is, has been made shorter doesn't necessarily mean that that exact position in time, relatively speaking, is going to work for the new overall timing for that motion. I might need to shift it one way or the other. So it may help a little bit in the beginning, potentially. Um, I personally never found a very practical use for this, my own personal workflow as I was animating. So I always use just regular keyframes. But the benefit you get with this is that you can very clearly see where are your key poses versus where are your breakdowns. Um, you can always just you know, grab your breakdowns and snap them on the whole frame numbers, you know, no big deal. Now you can also convert between normal keys and breakdown keys. So once you get to a certain point in your workflow, you're gonna take those breakdowns and having them as a breakdown keyframe isn't gonna be very useful anymore. So you just go in here, choose that keyframe, either here or on the graph editor, the same options appear in both places. Just right click down here, 
under a keys menu in there, I just say convert to key. Let me undo that, there we go. So if I'm up in here, I grab those keyframes. There's a keys menu up in here as well. Same option, convert to key. I could also convert them to break down as you probably saw that in both places. So both options are available for any keyframes you've got, regular or breakdowns.